Did you know there's a secret mechanic in Tears of the Kingdom that allows you to do over 800 weapon damage and can easily kill any Lionel in a single mounted attack? This combination is absolutely insane and I don't think it's ever going to be beat for the most amount of damage that Link can do in Tears of the Kingdom. There's two different ways that we're going to achieve Link's maximum damage potential and we're going to be combining a couple of different methods to do this. First, we're going to be using the complete Radiant Armor set, which when leveled up to level two gives us the set bonus of bone weapon proficiency. Then we're also going to be using mighty bananas to get the tier three attack up bonus. And instead of silver Lionel saber horns, we're going to be using Molduga jaws because they have that bone type to it, which is going to allow us to get the set bonus from the radiant armor set and drastically increase our damage. We're going to be fusing this. We're going to be fusing this Molduga jaw to both our Royal guards claymore, as well as our scimitar of the seven. And I'll be showing you how to unlock all of this stuff in the video as well. The way this works is pretty crazy and the theoretical limit of this is 820 damage and this is how we achieve that. You're going to fuse your Molduga jaw onto your Royal Guards Claymore and get it to the point of being broken. This will get you 128 damage. Now what's interesting about this is there's a secret effect on these Royal Guard Claymores. Once you get that notification of the weapon being broken you have three hits left before it completely breaks but what you can do is if you do one and then two more hits only you actually double the damage again. Now this doesn't show up in the menu, but this brings us on this particular weapon to 256 damage. And if you test this out, you can actually see this hidden effect in action. If I don't do the extra two hits with our Royal Guards claim art, you're gonna see that it takes multiple mounts to be able to kill this White Lionel. But if we do get that extra two hits on this and leave us with just one hit left on our weapon, we can mount the Lionel one time and kill it in just five or six hits. Then we get another 80% damage from our set bonus from our armor, which brings us to 460.8 damage. And then with our attack up bonus food, we get another 1.5 damage, which brings us to a total of 691 with this weapon. Similar bonuses can be added to our Scimitar of the Seven. If you fuse the Molduga John to here, it shows as 92 damage, but in reality with the bone weapon proficiency and our attack up bonus, we actually have 248.4 weapon damage on this, which is by far the highest damage weapon you can get for a one-handed sword. The way you get to the theoretical weapon damage limit with this is by finding a pristine Royal Guards Claymore down in the depths, sticking it inside of an Octorok and getting that plus 10 up attack damage, and then doing everything else exactly the same. And at this point, you'll have a weapon with 820 damage. With this weapon, you can completely devastate any Lionel in the game to include the armored Silver Lionels with only just one mount. Now, unfortunately, the Molduga Jaw is the most powerful bone that we've been able to find so far to fuse onto this. None of the more powerful fuse materials count as bones. And that other jaw bone that you get from the boss fight for the Wind Temple does not count, unfortunately, either. Now, killing Lionels is great and all, but what about everything else in the game? This is where the Scimitar of the Seven comes in, and it's by far my favorite weapon in the game. And fusing the Molduga Jaw on here gives you a really powerful weapon to use while you're exploring Hyrule. It pretty much one-shot everything in the game except white and silver tier enemies and even at this point it only takes three to five hits to kill everything but a boss and even when you're fighting a Molduga with it, the Molduga is not even gonna stand a chance and they're traditionally pretty scary. Now let's go over where you're gonna piece all of this together. If you head to the Kakariko Village Armor Shop, they're gonna have the Radiant Armor set here for sale. Now when you first go here, it's going to be unbelievably expensive. But if you've taken advantage of all the duplication glitches, you probably have enough money to buy it outright, but there's actually a way we can get this significantly cheaper. It really only takes a second to do and you can get this armor set significantly discounted. So we're gonna leave the armor shop we're going to turn right and run down the road once we get to this tree we're going to turn right again and we're going to run right through this way and we're heading to leslie who's inside this little shed here on the left she's going to have a quest that we can pick up essentially we need to cook a meal that's going to help cure her grandmother of this gloom sickness you're going to want to fast travel to hateno village and if you just jump right off the fast travel point you can land right on this building right here and then we can jump off again. We kind of float our way to the general store just over here on the left. Let's just run inside the store and they'll have some milk here for sale. You can't get this anywhere else but here. So just buy one of these. And if you don't have any Hylian rice already, you can buy some here too. Once you get your Hyrule herb and milk, head back to Kakariko Village. Then you're going to hold the milk, the Hylian rice, and a sundelion, and you're gonna cook it all in this pot right here. This is gonna make the sunny veggie porridge. And then all we gotta do is talk to Lasley again. She's gonna smell this sweet new porridge that you made for her. You're gonna hand that bad boy over and grandma's gonna be healed forever. 
Now that we've healed Grandma, head back to the armor shop and this Radiant armor set will be significantly cheaper. You'll also get the Sheikah fabric for doing this and just buy every piece that they have. As a bonus, this whole stealth set is going to be reduced in price as well. Now we need to level up each of these pieces to level 2. This is going to require quite a bit of Luminous Stone, so you're either going to have to farm all of that up, or I can show you how to duplicate your Luminous Stone really easily. To get all of the pieces to level 2, you're going to need a total of 75 Luminous Stones. But once you do, you're going to unlock the set bonus of Disguise Bone Weapon Proficiency. Now I can show you how to duplicate all of your Luminous Stones really easily. All you're going to need is a shield. And then once you have your shield, you just need to know how to shield jump, and you can do that by pressing X and A at the same time to jump onto your shield. So you just practice this a few times and you should be good. Now you need to go into your inventory and find an item that you have one of. I already have one of these puff shrooms, so that's going to work. Then we can go down on our inventory and find our luminous stones. If your inventory is like mine, your luminous stones should be just next to flint. And quite frankly, I don't need 126 flint. And if you have a ton of this, you can actually do this really quickly and I'll show you how. So we're going to pull out our shield, we're going to jump on top of it, and then we're going to go into our menu as quick as possible. Then we're going to grab our one puff shroom in our hand and we're gonna navigate down to the Luminous Stones. Now, if you don't have a ton of flint, don't do it this way. I'll show you the other way to do it. But we can grab the four Luminous Stone in our hands, and then we just exit out of this menu. You'll notice all of our items will pop out. And now if we go back into our inventory, we now have four extra Luminous Stones, but it did eat some of our flint. How this glitch works is it consumes the items that are directly right of it, which is our flint. So we're just basically turning flint into Luminous Stones. There is a way to do this glitch without consuming any items, and I've got a full video I'm going to leave in the description below so you can check that out and learn everything you need to know about it. So I recommend checking that out if you want. Now, if you don't have any Royal Guards Claymores, you can head to Hyrule Castle. And inside the throne room area, you can run up the stairs and then hop just behind this little spot right here. And there's a Royal Guards Claymore sitting right there. Now to get my favorite weapon, the Scimitar of the Seven and Mulduga Jaw at the same time. Once you clear out the Sandstorm for the Gerudo, you can head to the shop with a diamond on it. Inside of here, you're going to talk to the lady who's saying the shop owner is missing. You can launch out of the Gerudo Highland Skyview Tower and fly your way south to this shrine location right here. And from this shrine location, we can turn around just a little bit and launch yourself up in the air with a rocket. And then we can activate our glider and we want to aim for this little perch right there. On this island is going to be the shop owner that you need to rescue as, as well as the Mulduga swimming around in this area that we need to kill. If you've never fought a Mulduga before, we can use a time bomb to lure it over. And it's going to kind of swim over at that time bomb. It's going to eat it and then it's going to explode while inside of it. This is going to... This is going to stun the Mulduga, and what we can do is just from here, just murder the Mulduga as quick as possible. Make sure to collect all of your loot as well as the Mulduga jaw that we came here for. Head back to Gerudo and talk to the shop owner. She's going to give you a new quest to forge the Scimitar of the Seven and the Daybreaker Shield. For this, you're going to need four diamonds, ten flint, a Gerudo shield, and a Gerudo scimitar. To easily get the scimitar and shield if you don't have one, you can head to this location on the map right here and fall into these sinkholes. There's going to be a Gerudo shield at the bottom of this hole, and a Gerudo Scimitar at the bottom of this hole. Once you get all your materials, head back to the shop owner to craft the Scimitar of the Seven. Now there's quite a few places you can farm up Mulduga. They're all gonna have to be farmed up in the Gerudo Desert. There's one near the Shrine that kind of goes right around this particular area. There's another one just over here, another one just north of Gerudo Town, and then over here, which is the one that we showed you for the quest line. And now you've got everything you need to become super overpowered in Tears of the Kingdom. Really hope you all enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.